Hello there. Welcome to Conversations with a Wounded Healer. I'm your host, Sarah Buino. I watched the documentary about Avicii recently. And of course, I didn't prepare enough for this to actually like look up what the title is because that would be just too much. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm sure if you go to Netflix, you too can find it just by searching in Avicii. So if you don't know, he is, he's an electronic music artist and the documentary is about his rise to fame. And it starts off kind of talking about, you know, him and his early career and, you know, just what a dedicated learner he was and how hard he reached out to connect with people and to, to just learn and grow. And when he kind of shot into stardom, uh, you start to see his anxiety come out in really difficult ways um, that manifested in, you know, they didn't, they didn't really say addiction to alcohol, but it manifested in him overusing alcohol, which then created some physical health issues for him. And it just all kind of tumbles down from there. And spoiler alert, if you didn't know, Avicii uh, committed suicide in, I believe it was April of 2018. So I'm watching this with my husband and the thing that resonated the most for me that I was really surprised about was I could feel the level of pressure that he felt on him. And, and it's so interesting because I'm not a famous superstar musician, if you didn't know, I'm not. But what I do relate to is the idea that you as one person are holding up a bunch of other people with, with your needs. And... I just could, I could absolutely completely empathize with and relate to this experience of if I don't do X, Y, Z, then other people are going to suffer because of the choices that I've made. And in the documentary, you know, Avicii finally gets to the point where he's like, you know what? Fuck this. Fuck this noise. This is killing me. I can't do this. You know, and he, as he starts to cancel concerts, you hear his manager kind of come in and try to be this voice of reason to keep pushing him to do something that he ultimately doesn't want to do. And I just related to this so hard. Not that anybody has ever pushed me, not, I guess, probably at some point in my life, somebody has, but, you know, at this point in my life, nobody else is externally like making that push on me but I've done it to myself. Like I've put myself in a position where I manage other people. You know, I have enough clients on my caseload that depend on me. And I've worked myself into this position where I am needed. And now that I'm here, I'm like, oh, fuck, there are a lot of people that need me and depend on me. And because I'm somebody who really, really, really cares about not letting people down, it's so much pressure. I tell you all this in, you know, conjunction with the Avicii thing, not, I'm not, I'm not suicidal. Nobody needs to assess me. I promise I have no ideation plans or intent. As my husband and I like to talk about anytime I might say something a little bit off color, I'll be like, do I need to assess you? No, you do not. But just, just how we can put ourselves in a prison of our own mind, right? Like, you know, Avicii certainly worked himself into this position where he's the only one that can go perform on stage. He's the only one that could be Avicii. And, you know, the fans were so demanding and wanting more and more and more from him when all he wanted to do was make music. He didn't want to perform anymore. And it just was such a reflection on our society and what we think success is. You know, he wanted to make music and that's that's it, you know, and he got to the level where I feel like musicians nowadays, what I hear, at least in the industry, is that people make their money from touring, not actually from albums, because there's so much streaming and, you know, people don't buy albums anymore, blah, 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 blah. So there's like this necessary evil. And it's it's just so interesting to me to watch our culture try to push us into places that are just not healthy. And it was so clear from the beginning of this documentary how like, this is not what you want. This is not what you want. And he even says that, like he says in hindsight, you know, I should have, I should have stopped it here or I should have stopped it there or I should have known that, you know, these health issues were a symptom of me living a life that wasn't for me. Whew. So it was a nice reminder that, Whenever I start to get messages from my body 
messages from my heart, from my soul, from my friends saying that I'm on a path that's not serving me, that I need to take a step back and listen to that. So I'm sharing that with you in the hopes that you listen to yourself, you listen to your body, you listen to your needs. We have to get quiet in order to do that. And in our society, we don't have a lot of space for that, but we have to make room for it. We just have to. So I will leave you with that today. And I, yeah, that's it. That's all I got for you. So thank you as always to Andrea Clunder and Edwin Ruiz at the Creative Imposter Studios for editing, to Liam O'Donnell for the album art, and to Ben Mueller for our theme music. To find out more about our podcast, you can visit us at www.headhearttherapy.com slash podcast. Thanks so much. Until next time. Bye-bye.